when we have the utility, we have the static details where we created a few roles. Let me spend a little bit of time to explain the first two roles that we see right here. Customer is a basic customer who comes to the website, register for an account and places an order. But we will also have some special user which will belong to a company. Now the advantage a company user will get is they do not have to make the payment right away. They will have 30 days which technically we call net 30 which means they will get 30 days to make payment after the order has been placed. So for them we will have a different functionality and a company user can be registered by an admin user. Now all of those registration complexities we will work on in the later videos but right now those are the two roles and then we have admin and an employee role. Employee will have access to maybe modify the shipping of a product and other details but admin will be able to perform all the CRUD operations on product and other content management. That is the reason behind four roles that we have created. Most of the time we will be working on the three roles in the top here but I wanted to spend a minute to explain you why we have a role of company. If a user is given a role of company, they must belong to some company. So we need to manage a list of all the companies that are authorized in the system as well. For that we have to perform CRUD operations on a company model. So let me show you what you have to do to accomplish that as an assignment in the next video. We want to enhance our application and it is time for third assignment where you have to do something that you have already done before. And what I mean by that is you have to create a new model or a new table in the database with the name of company and table name will be companies. That is what we have been using so far and inside there these are all the properties that you have to create. Name will be the required property and everything else will be optional. You have to add company to repository and unit of work and finally you will have to perform CRUD operations on company using data tables. So good luck with that assignment and I will show you how to do all of that in the next video. I hope you were able to complete the assignment. Let me switch back to the code here and first we have to add a new model. I will do that. Name of the model will be company. Let me add that. It will be a public class and I will be adding all the properties and name will be required. Everything else we will make that optional and that looks good. Once we configure our model here, we have to add that to our DB set. So I will open application DB context here and I will create a DB set where we will have companies where the table name will be companies and we have to add a migration. Default project, make sure it is data access and we will add a migration, add company table. Perfect, that looks good. We have the migration here and we can update the database to push this migration. That looks good. Next we have to work on repository. So copy the category repository, paste it one more time, rename that to be company repository. Let me do that. We'll copy the name, change the class name here and the constructor. The interface will be iCompany that we will implement very shortly and that will be company model. This also will be company and underscore company dot update the obj. Great, company repository looks good. We need the interface. 
Let me copy category and paste that. Rename that to be iCompany Repository. Copy the interface name and modify things here to be company. And perfect. That looks good. The error goes away. Finally, we have to add that to our unit of work and unit of work. Perfect. Our unit of work looks good. Let me update the unit of work here. Copy and paste it for company. And it will be iCompany repository. We will initialize that. So company is equal to new company repository and pass underscore DB there. With that, our unit of work is looking good with the company model. Final thing that we have to do is work on all the CRUD operation and we want to use data table. So maybe we can copy what we have for product and we can just paste that once again. Controller, whoops, in the admin here, controller, copy and paste the product controller and I will rename that. So this one will be company controller. That looks good. Let me modify things in this file as well. I will press Ctrl Shift F. I have the company controller open and inside there find and replace. Wherever I find product I will replace that with company. Let me do that. Not in the entire solution. Inside the current document always make sure to check this when you are replacing. Let me replace all. Perfect, that is done. Let me also see if there is any lowercase product. Replace that with company. Replace all. We did not have any. Let me see if anything is missed here. The controller name looks good. Get all. It is including category. That is not needed. And the unit of work will be company here. That looks good. We do not have a view model for our company, so here directly we will be returning a company object. Let me remove everything here and we will just return a new company. That should work. If it is an update, then we will get a company here. Let me call that company OBJ and we will return that back. Perfect. In absurd. We will retrieve a company object and nothing else. Company OBJ, we do not have any file. Remove that. And we will remove the if condition for file here. That is not needed. We can directly check if company OBJ.id is equal equal to zero. Then we want to add that company OBJ. Else we want to update the company OBJ, whoops, there we go. Let me hide that here and if the model state is not valid, we return back to the view with company OBJ. Perfect, looks great. We do not need the iWebhost environment, so let me remove that from the dependency injection. Great. Lastly, we have the API calls that are needed for data table. We do not want the include properties. That looks good. When we have to delete, we do not care about the image here. And we can delete the company. Perfect. Looks great. Let me save everything. Close the controller here. And we have to modify the view. So let me copy the product folder and paste that once again here. Rename that to be company. The folder name must match the controller name. So that is why it has to be exactly like company. 
we will go to index here and we do not have any model here we can remove that rather than product list it will be company list and it will be company controller create new company perfect that looks good next we have the data table here we will modify all the properties with all the properties that are related to our company model if you want you can remove the address from here that way you will get some more width but i will keep that here that is okay finally we need to create a javascript so we will call that company.js and that looks good for index we need to modify the main one that is absurd here and the model here will be company itself we do not need any view model we can directly check if model.id is not zero then update else create and this will be company we will have a hidden id we do not have image that looks good i have to modify all the properties so let me do that quickly i do not want you to wait and watch so let me fix that we do not have a text area i will remove that one and i will modify everything else right here perfect that looks good we will remove everything else that is not needed here and finally we have model.id for update or create button we do not have the image i can remove that and this can take up the complete column 12 with that saved here i need to add that to underscore layout so inside the underscore layout we will have to add one more item here and that will be company controller call that company here and where i have the role here let me comment this out for now because we are developing things right now we will give access to all the content management so what we can do is go to company well category controller and comment out the authorized keywords as well when we deploy the application we will come back and we will make sure that everything is looking good but right now when we are developing things let me keep things super simple with all of those changes i believe everything is complete let's see and validate oh we forgot one thing we did not add the javascript for company so let me do that real quick here js copy product paste that for company and there we have to modify the property names here so let me do that and change to name street address city state and phone number we have to follow the camel casing here if you are not sure then see what the api is returning back and based on that you can modify the route here will be admin company get all that looks good then for the absurd here it will be company again and same will be valid for delete i believe that looks good let me run the application and see if that works we will navigate to company here and nothing is there in the data table let me add a company now i can create a company from here but what i want to do is i want to seed the database and you saw when i click the back button it takes me back to product that is because in absurd here i am sure it is product controller where it should be company controller perfect but basically i want to seed our company table with let's say two companies for now 
So let me do that real quick. We will go to application db context here. Let me hide this and copy what we have for category. Paste it one more time. We want to see our company table. Let me create a company record here. Perfect, I have added three records here for ID 1, 2, and 3. Next thing that I have to do is add a migration. I will call that add company records. And once that is done, we have to update the database. That looks good. After that, let me start the application again. This time, we should see the three records in company. I will try to perform CRUD operation as well. That is category. We have to go to company. Looks good. We have the validation. Test. Let me try to create that. That worked. Let me try to delete. Let me try to edit that first. And let me try to delete. Perfect. So all the CRUD operations on company are working as expected. We have added company and we are able to perform the CRUD operation. But when a user is registered, we have to assign that user that, hey, this user belongs to a company. For that, we need to add a foreign key relation on our user. We will go to data access. Well, we first have to go to model here where we have application user and we have to add that foreign key relation to the company table. So first we will add an integer and this will be nullable because it is possible that the user is a customer user and if it is customer, then they will not have a company. But if it is a company user, only then they will have a company ID assigned to their profile. So perfect, that looks good. Next, we need the navigation property. We will have to add the foreign key and there we have to say that company ID is the navigation property for this company that we have and we do not want to validate this company because that will not be populated when we are creating a user or anything else. So that way we have added the foreign key relation on our user. Change that we have made is in our core model. So we will have to add a new migration. I will call that add company to user. And once that is done, we will have to update the database. Perfect, you can see add column nullable is true. That looks good, perfect. Migration has been applied. With that configured, let me run the application once again. Now if we go to register here, if we select the role of company, then right here I want to show another drop down where I will display list of all the companies. So let me modify that in the register. I can search for that. We want both the page model as well as the page. First, we have to populate that register dropdown and pass that on to the razor page. In order to access that, we will need unit of work using dependency injection. So let me add that. Then we have to add company ID inside the input model. Let me do that right here. And we need a drop down. 
So copy the row list here and modify that to be company list. We have to populate the company list on the on get here. So where we have the row list, copy that, paste it for the company list. For that we will go to underscore unit of work dot company and on there we have get all then we will have the select statement where we will transform that to a select list item text will be i dot name and value will be i dot id dot to string perfect that looks good and we have the input we can go to our page here and where we have the role here let me copy this paste it one more time this will be company list and asp4 will be company id we will display select company here and that looks good with that configured let me switch back here and we will have to restart the project let me do that we go to register here and great we have the drop down to select a company with that configured let me continue from the next video now the drop down for company should not always be visible i want it to be visible if the selected role is company we will quickly achieve that using javascript where we have the drop down here we will say style display none and we scroll down we have the section for script inside there we will be adding a script tag and we can add custom javascript we will add that when the document is ready and there what we want to do is when row is modified we want it to trigger that section if i do f12 here and examine this you will notice that it automatically gets an id of input underscore role so i can use that here and i will say when input underscore role dot change is triggered then i want to invoke a function in that function we will have to get what role has been selected if that is company only then we want to toggle the drop down so we will say variable selection is equal to dollar and there we can get that using hash paste the input row and then we can get option which is selected that will give us the value that has been selected and we will call the dot text on there finally we can check if selection is equal equal to company what do we want to do in that case in that case we want to show the drop down now which drop down do we want to toggle let me get its id that is input underscore company id these ids are generated automatically based on the asp4 that we have so right here we will add the dollar sign and i will say hash input underscore company id dot show in the else part here i will hide that i believe that looks good but javascript is a tricky business so unless and until we restart the application or see that in action it is hard to believe because there are chances of a spelling mistake we select company that comes up and perfect if i select anything else then the drop down disappears perfect that looks good for our drop down final thing that is remaining here is if we have company and we select a company here we need to populate the company id when we register the user and this company id should only be populated if the role is company so let me switch back and we will go to the page model where we have the on post before we create the user we have to check here if input dot role 
is equal equal to static detail dot role company in that case we want to assign user dot company id is equal to input dot company id with that configured let me restart and see if that works i will also open sql server to test the user that has been created we will select company and let me give that with it books here or register perfect that is done let me switch back to our database bulky and let me examine the aspnet user stable where is the new user right here we go to the right and perfect we have the company id that has been assigned and that looks great with that we are able to register company users in our application.